Welcome back to the farm. On this video, I'm going through replacing the broken, old, worn out lattice work around the deck. So, under a lot of decks, people will put up some form of a skirt, whether it's boards or lattice work, something. And the theory is, is it's to dress it up. It's to help keep critters from getting under it. But the problem is, is when you use the traditional wooden lattice, it falls apart really easily. So, you know, the dogs have kind of torn it up. We had a bunch of landscape blocks just lying around, so I tried building an actual wall out of stone bricks. You'd think, that's surely going to stop the dogs, right? No. Rollo, our 90-some pound poodle, he's managed to actually figure out that he can plow the top bricks off and he can still get out. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the bricks, remove the latticework, and I went to town and I bought cedar fence pickets along with pressure treated 2x4s. So I'm going to attach directly to the deck on the top side, and then I'm going to run the 2x4 on the bottom, and then we'll attach the bottom of the pickets to that. Now I'm only dealing with 30 inches or less, so the fact that these pickets are 60 inches, it means I'll get two boards out of each picket. I'll then have to duplicate the dog ears on it, the dog ears will be pointed down on them, and then we'll just put this up as a, basically it's a fence. So realistically what I'm building is I'm building a tiny little privacy fence underneath the bottom of the deck. So my hope is this will prevent the dogs from going under the deck, around the house, and out in another spot that's no longer fenced in for them. Now, on your home or your project, you might be doing this not necessarily to keep dogs in or keep critters from making homes under your deck. It might just be you want to dress your deck up. And this is an awesome way to make your deck look cleaner, more professional. Now the problem is, is a lot of people again have been using this lattice work. I hate, hate lattice work with a passion. It's flimsy, it falls apart easily, it doesn't last long. I mean it's only, what is it, about an eighth of material? Just so an eighth by two inch board stapled to another eighth by two inch board. If you have it outside, wind, rain, thunderstorms, animals, it's just going to tear them up. So now the vinyl ones, I've never really played with them. I would assume the vinyl would hold up a lot better. So if you love the idea of the lattice look, I would spend the little extra money and get it in vinyl. Now when you do this, you have a lot of options to choose from. And that's why I'm hesitant to do it on my whole deck versus just the dog section of the deck. Now the dog pen area, I'm opting to go with no gap. I'm just butting the boards right up next to each other to make a solid privacy fence, essentially. Now, another look that I think would look good is put about an inch space in between them, or two inches, or you could actually do something to where you have one board on one side of the 2x4, and then they kind of overlap just a quarter of an inch, half inch or so, and then the other board goes on the other 2x4, and then it alternates. I love that look. I think that's beautiful. It gives it some depth. It still gives it that privacy look. So what I'm doing is I want to hide the underside of the deck. Again, what we're going to do is I'm trying to keep the dogs in and I want to look professional and clean and nice. So that's what we're going to be working on in this video. So I hope you enjoy it. So board number two, I did notch it just to accommodate that little concrete footing. I have these boards at 28 inches for my deck. 
I want them just barely off the gravel. In some cases, they're touching the gravel, but I'm able to just kind of slide that gravel out of the way. So this is what my deck skirting should look like. I've gone back and forth of do I want two inch gaps in between each board or an inch gap or a three inch gap. I'm not really sure what I want. So I'm just defaulting back to, I'm building a cedar privacy fence that's only 28 inches tall and I'm putting the boards upside down. So these are your standard six foot cedar privacy fence pickets. So this is what I built thousands and thousands and thousands of feet of privacy fence when I was a teenager with this right here. It's great to work with. It lasts a long time. I love this material. Um, the cedar, it's just fun to work with. It's easy to work with. And it lasts a long time. Now, obviously, for the deck skirting, it doesn't need to be six foot tall. I'm cutting my pickets at 29 inches, so I get two pickets out of each board. Now, we have these little dog ears. All this is is a 45. Um, so you come down an inch from the top and you just cut a 45 angle on it. Now, you can mass produce a bunch of these real quickly. And what I'll do is you can do it with a hand saw, you can do it with circular saw, but the more you do, the easier and faster it is if you have a compound miter saw. If you don't have one, you can still get away with hand saws, circular saws, jigsaws. This is the most efficient tool to cut it though, is some form of a compound miter saw. Something you can just turn the deck to 45, and now you're just ready to cut. So what I'm going to do is I got the full pickets. I've matched up the ends. That end has the dog ears on it. So I'm going to cut new dog ears on this side. And I like to do it two boards at a time. Now I have dog ears on both ends. So what I'll do is I'll make several of these boards exactly like this, and then we'll go back to 90, and then I'll measure my measurement from top down. So in this case, it's 29 inches. Make a mark, come from that end down to 29 inches and make another mark. So match up your ends, get the board up against the fence nice and tight. That's way more than I want, obviously. So come down to where I'm only cutting off an inch. So we brought the saw back to zero. And for my applications, it's 29 inches. Now I'm going to come off the other end too and make another 29 inch mark. Sorry if that was out of focus. It's interesting trying to do work and operate a camera at the same time. And so that's scrap board. So we have 14 inches of scrap per picket. So now out of those two boards, I now have four pickets made and ready to go. Now if you're a proper carpenter, you're going to take a tape measure and hold it out and actually measure it off and transfer that to the board. Because I'm a one-man band, you know, it's a little harder to hold the tape measure and get the measurement and mark it. So what I'm doing is I just butt it up the 2x4 to that 2x4, the one that's already attached, approximate middle of this 4x4 post, and I'm making my mark. It's just, it's one of those little tricks that, yes, it's quasi-cutting corners, 
But if you can save 10 seconds here, 30 seconds there, why not? Over the course of a big project, you know, it can save you some time. But also if you're, you know, unsure, it can also bite you in the butt and waste material. Keep in mind that saying, measure twice, cut once. In this case, I'm not measuring. I'm saying that, okay, that's butted up. That is definitely the width or length of the board I need. So it's kind of hard to screw it up when you have the board laying right there. This is just a simple 90 degree cut. I'm matching up my blade with my mark. And there we go. Now it's time to put it up. So I'm taking a three inch deck screw. I'm just gonna put one screw in on this side so it can work as a hinge and then I'll put the level on and get it level. So I've matched up the top of those two boards and I'm kind of resting it on my toe over here. So I'm close, I'm not, I'm not level, but I'm close to level. So I got the bubble in between the two lines. I put one screw in to hold it. I have two more screws, one for each end, to properly secure it. And I got my torpedo level. And I got my drill. So now I can start slapping up pickets. So I put the top screw in, and then I just put the torpedo level on to, cons to ensure that I'm staying plumb and we're not doing any weird wonky angles.
I was very happy with how this section of the deck skirt turned out. So I think this is the style I'm going to do on the rest of the house. Um, probably come spring. So I'm very happy with how it turns out. I think it looks really nice. It looks clean. It looks professional. And it keeps the dogs in. It prevents them from going anywhere. So, and that was my big goal. So, that's where we're at right now. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click like, subscribe. You know, with me being a new channel, it all actually does help me with the YouTube analytics. So, I greatly appreciate any of the likes and subscribes. So, I'm very happy with how this project turned out. Realistically, it was simple. It's just a lot of repetitive cuts, a lot of repetitive putting screws in boards. It's very easy to do. It doesn't take a lot of skill set to do it. It's mainly just measure your boards out and cut them to length and then use a level to just keep all your boards plumb as you're going along. Very simple. I would believe almost anybody could complete this project and I think it looks, I think it just makes the deck look much nicer in the long run. And then if we were to plant a couple of little plates in front of it, it would just give it some really good curb appeal. So, I'm Ben with MD Triple Creek. Good luck to you and your next project.